Former ANC spokesperson Bule Mabe and uh, six others have each been granted bail of 30,000 rand at the Palm Ridge Magistrates Court. Mabe and his uh, co-accused are facing fraud and corruption charges. He has stepped aside from the ANC NEC in accordance with the party's policy. Now the charges stem from a 2016 tender with uh, 27 million rand issued by the Gauteng Agricultural Department to Mabe's company Enviromobi which was contracted to interrogate and formalize waste operatives into the mainstream waste management economy. Now, the state alleges that the contract specified payment could only occur once 50% of the work was completed with no upfront payment allowed. However, it was discovered that uh, over 25 million rand had already been paid to the company for 200 motorized three-wheelers which remained with the service provider. The case has been postponed to March of next year. Now, Pule Mabe joins me now in studio. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for, for coming to see us in studio. You, you and six co-accused, um, um, Bule, including your wife, were granted 30,000 rand bail each today. It must, have been, it must have been a tough one, being in court with your wife. I saw on your ex page that you're actually celebrating 20 years, uh, um, your anniversary. I mean, it must have been tough today. Yes, uh, not very tough. Um, actually, uh, <coughs> we knew... Um, that uh, a day like this will have to, to come at some point you know so we celebrated our anniversary last week on the 9th of uh, october uh, and part of the reasons why i would not have agreed to take up a position uh, of being a public representative and going back to represent my party the anc in the national assembly was to make sure that uh, i deal with this because this case has been going on for quite some time. Yeah. We have made representations to the special investigating uh, unit. So I would have wanted to avoid the embarrassment of uh, having to uh, have to step aside, resign from parliament and uh, you know, have all of this. That's why it was important for me to immediately convey to the public uh, my position to step aside mm -hmm. as a member of uh, uh, to step aside from the national executive committee until such time that the charges preferred against me which i deem to be serious are ventilated successfully in court because uh, i have again today pronounced on my innocence i've already telephoned to the secretary general yeah. of the anc comrade figile mbalula uh, over the weekend to convey my intentions at the time i was not uh, charged so it would have been premature to take any decision. As soon as this happens, mm. two things now have to happen. I have to step aside from my position as National Executive Committee member of the ANC and uh, all other related responsibilities. Uh, I also uh, intend writing to the Integrity Committee of the ANC uh, to advise them in accordance with that resolution of the ANC uh, that uh, I would want to appear before them just to give them a high level view of what this case entails and what our position is without necessarily descending into the arena mm. to a point of even disclosing what will constitute our defense yeah. because uh, that falls fact, within the area you, of subjudicate. As you speak about um, the, the SG having telephonically spoken to him at the weekend, he has has responded speaking to to sabc yes. saying that he welcomes the decision and that you're duty bound and that a statement will later follow yes I, is it a matter of duty or, or principle for you well it's both it's both you know uh, one it's a matter of uh, duty it's also a matter of principle uh, i have been a member of the african national congress for over 30 years and in the 30 years that i've been a member of the african national congress uh, earlier on when I started, I would have been part of the ANC pioneer movement. I rose to lead the ANC Youth League for two consecutive terms as Treasurer General of the ANC. Yeah. I am now leading the National Executive Committee of the ANC for near three terms, meaning for almost 15 years. Mm -hmm. And in all of these periods, I would have been part of 
uh, structures of the ANC in the form of NGCs, policy conferences and national conferences that affirmed a set of resolutions. Part of those that sought to speak to the renewal of the ANC was that uh, those uh, indicted to appear in a court of law must do the right, of the, the right thing, which is to step aside from their responsibility as part of uh, allowing a renewed ANC to be able to find itself. Mm -hmm. So doing this is not in any way or form a pronouncement of guilt on my part. It is a commitment, a steadfastness towards living up to that principle. We can't go to conferences, adopt principles, and yet we ourselves as leaders in the apex structure of the organization find it difficult to live through that which we say our lower structures must be able to implement. Well, we must be you, an embodiment of those okay, resolutions Are you ourselves. speaking on, on a tone of regret? I mean, mm. as you go through all of this, it sounds like you're rehashing and just really speaking out of regret. Is that the case? No, no, no. Why, okay. If I was speaking on a tone of regret like you are suggesting, yeah. what will I be regretting? Well, you know, you were right when you said that these charges against you are quite uh, serious. I mean, yes. the allegations for one, Enviromobi did not declare that you were its owner. You were still a member of parliament. During the investigation by the SIU, mm -hmm. it was found that your company had misrepresented itself during the bidding process for the 27 million rand tender. I mean, that in itself, how can do you I, justify it? Can I clarify that? Yes, look, please. Look, to the extent that uh, it's not, well, the SABC is not a space to say whether this is accurate or not. Yeah, of course. Uh, safe to say that uh, very early in the first quarter of 2017, I would already have advised the leadership of the ANC of my intentions to resign as a member of the National Assembly. So... The period in question where declaration would have needed to be made, you only declare when you're a member of parliament. So by the time those declarations of that period would, would have needed to be made, at that point I would have long made my decision to leave parliament. So uh, how do you, how do you, how do yeah. you make declarations about uh, working elsewhere uh, uh, when you are no longer working at the SABC? Because uh, in the very first quarter of uh, 2017, I would already have declared that. But again, this is an ethical question. Yeah. It's an ethical question in the sense that, you see, uh, these are matters of governance. We, we have to really separate that which is an, a, an ethical construct and that which is a criminal construct. So the de declarations in parliament uh, have got to do with uh, the moral standing of leaders who are public representatives to show the public that uh, uh, they are of good standing and all of that. I have never at any given time uh, not pronounced on my association with okay. Enviromobi. The only reason I would have resigned as a director of Enviromobi was merely because I was going to take up a position as a member of parliament. I've never concealed uh -huh. my participation, more so because the innovation in question which uh, is part of this whole uh, issue that we're dealing with. It's an innovation that I constructed myself. The Enviromobi <laughs> innovation is written by me. I'm the patent holder there. So now I can't, I can't regret for innovating that which goes on to create employment. But also I can't stop state institutions from arriving at conclusions that there may be a case of criminality here mm -hmm. uh, worth being responded to. Yeah, so but, but, but it also gets worse, Bule. It gets really worse here when we look at the main contention of the NPA's case as detailed in the charge sheet. It's, it speaks about the 27.5 million prepayments the provincial, uh, provincial government department made to your company for what the state is claiming, yes, is a breach of contracts i mean you you're justifying that um and but like it, it gets worse and money for work not done services were not rendered the allegation in itself uh, just rubbed salt in the wound okay. how, how did you get paid to begin no, with if, if services were not rendered yes i think uh, and, and thanks again for inviting me because uh, an important platform such as the SABC accord me the opportunity to clarify yes. your good your good viewers back at home um, when the case is being ventilated in court, mm -hmm. uh, which is at now, even in, on trial, uh, it will, 
one of the things that will be shared with yourselves because remember all this these are allegations yes so 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 to rebut this these are going to be rebutted with facts mm -hmm. if you say things are not were not being delivered you have to say what was not delivered for instance i can tell you now mm -hmm. for free and i can place this on record yeah. 200 motorized vehicles have been delivered Today, the SIU, in their own vision, only pointed to uh, some 100 odd, um, so some 196 that was delivered. According to themselves, actually, only four uh, are still outstanding. So now let me place it on record. Mm -hmm. uh, the 200 has been delivered. Those delivery slips are there. Uh, they were shared with uh, the relevant uh, uh, bodies. In this instance, they would have been shared with uh, uh, the relevant uh, a, a, a government department mm. Th there's never been a point uh, where there was question about the delivery so i'm not sure uh, which part of non-delivery is this one because okay, i, I tell you because, why why mm. i made mention of that because you had a contractual agreement between the department and your company which stipulated that the department had to consider paying on condition 50 percent of the work that had been completed up and upfront payments made uh, were made to you yes but remember this all that but, but remember that. this these are allegations that have been made no, no, i the, hear you yes, so but i'm, I'm saying, telling you the basis of the question i am so so yeah. but, but remember respectfully so to you and understanding that you are simply reading a charge sheet. Yes. So I am saying to you, when the charge sheet is presented in court at trial, mm -hmm. we will prove through evidence uh, that a number of those things that you are raising as allegations would have been clarified at the time that the performance of that action called payment mm -hmm. took place. So, 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 but this will be a clarified in court. Remember, it won't change. Whether I say it here at the SABC yeah. or I say it in court, it won't change. I can tell you this. Uh, there was delivery of the vehicles. And, and if, if you talk prepayment, mm -hmm. as a matter of principle, a prepayment uh, would constitute uh, an audit irregularity. Mm -hmm. It could be... Um, uh, fruitless, whatever, but it, would, it, it, it will not... So, so if you and I agree, just so that we work together, yes. if we agree that prepayment does not constitute a crime, it will constitute an audit irregularity in terms of accounting terms. Okay. But we'll get to that yeah. when we deal with those. So I'm just saying so that we don't find ourselves using a simple accounting process and making it look like a criminal activity. Okay. Non-declaration, like I was saying to you, whether I declared or not, or not let's pack that. Non-declaration is a moral duty. Declaration is a moral issue. It's an ethical case. If a member of parliament has not declared certain of his interests and those are later discovered, they are then taken to the ethics committee. And then they have to explain if the ethics committee is not satisfied with their explanation, there will then be a sanction issued against such a member. So, okay. so basically, just so that I want us to shift on this one so that we can move. Uh, prepayment as well as declaration, these two fall within, one falls within the realm of ethic, uh, ethical conduct, the other one falls within uh, uh, the realm of accounting practices. Okay, so, so that gives us an indication on your line uh, and your position as you take this matter up and head back to court to, to ventilate it. Unfortunately, I would have liked to, to squeeze in, uh, if they'll allow me, uh, because for the sake of time, you are suggest it's suggested here, thank you, that uh, you were issued a letter of demand to the department uh, wanting further payment of over 9 million rand for safekeeping, storage and ancillary services relating to the fleet. Is that true? Yes, I'm sure you are referring to the juristic person. Yes. So, of course, the juristic person in the form of EnviroMobi would have done that. And uh, based on uh, subsequent legal opinions, that the department would have uh, received uh, the parties, to the best of my knowledge, agreed to settle at uh, just over six uh, million and some, some couple of hundreds of thousands. Uh, because uh, one, there would have been, that safekeeping would have meant that this uh, motorized three-wheelers 
would have been kept in storage for an extended period of time, which the department did not anticipate. Had the department anticipated that as I procure this motorized, three, this, this, this motorized vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, I will also provide this place so that they could be stored. So obviously, I mean, you know it with yourself. I mean, uh, when you keep a car with mechanics or anywhere, if you keep a car for a long time, you are liable to pay storage costs. Because uh, if something happens to that car, while it is in the care of those uh, uh, mechanics, it will have to be their duty to fix the car. For instance, at one instance, there was a case of hailstorm. When there was that case of hailstorm, when even when that provision was not even made yeah. initially, the car had to be fixed. But you see, the most important thing, so that we do not uh, uh, just reduce this engagement to these technical issues, mm -hmm. we also have to mention that, uh, that there's also human interest here. The human interest has got to do with the many beneficiaries uh, who were... Uh, the expect who were supposed to be the beneficiaries of yes. a project like this. So basically, when you stalled the rollout of a project, I mean, one, there was a project launch, mm -hmm. meaning that the project existed. Two, there are people who were trained. I mean, uh, uh, former Premier Comrade uh, Makura, uh, the former MEC of GDAT, Comrade Lebohan uh, Maile, the former MEC of GDAT, uh, Comrade uh, Morakani, all of them, in one way or the other, participated in the rollout of the project, either by way of handing out learner's licenses, by way of handing out the motorized three-wheelers themselves, or by way of uh, launching the project. These things are part of public record. Yeah. Importantly is that uh, GDAT even went as far as going out and publishing a gazette on a, on a, on a waste management plan for the informal waste sector using exactly the model that EnviroMobi would have put forward of these motorized three-wheelers. Yeah. So there's a story of innovations that we should not be scared to stand on the side of innovations that contribute to socio-economic transformation in our country. We should not be scared to do that, but we must also know that that might also come with us paying a huge price, including with our own personal liberties. But when that happens, because in court what wins is facts, we have to place before the public the relevant facts of what would Are you have saying there's transpired. a witch hunt against you? No. I'm, I'm, I'm one person who don't even believe that witches go out hunting. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. You yeah, know? Yeah. They are hunters. Hunters are real hunters. Mm -hmm. Don't believe what okay. so, about so, 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 so I'm just saying, in my language, uh, 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 witch hunting, no, no, no. This. So now I, I, don't, I don't believe that there is a any undue thing and all of that. If there is, if there is any undue dealing here, it will expose itself as the case goes on. This case is now before a court of law. Mm -hmm. We have to be lawful in our dealing with a case such as this. And I must commend the law enforcement agencies, the prosecution on how they've been handling the matter till this far. Having a day in court allows me the fellow accused, my family, to be able to clear and place our vision on record. Okay. Because if we don't do that, you would imagine this. I mean, I would have gone and been a member of parliament now, but I had to restrain myself because I know that there are certain of these things that have got to be addressed. You know, but unfortunately, if you don't address those things and you just tell yourself that, ah, little look at it doesn't happen like that. Okay, so you were thinking ahead of time, but in the, uh, the, the gist of the matter, you're sticking to your story. Um, you have done nothing wrong, and the courts will have to prove it uh, and show for it come, come court time. Well, of course, I mean, we pronounced on our guilt. We pronounced on our guilt, and we will share with the court uh, our understanding of this case. And we'll also share with the court how a case such as this has effectively compromised what could have been benefits to the many waste pickers, the people that you pass on the streets mm -hmm. pulling the trolleys. These are people who are supposed, these are waste pickers. They are people who are supposed to be beneficiaries of some of these uh, innovations. They wrote themselves or they took to social media a, a year or so ago 
saying that they will drive the Karikis and go to court. We have to say to them, no, it's not necessary. Because there was one time where there was a big uh, SIU bruha around uh, this whole thing. So he said, no, it's not necessary. We will go and put forward a vision. And we'll put a vision with which we believe is factual. Yes. So we don't want at this stage to really delve into uh, the merits and demerits, who's the complainant, whether such a complainant has got a local standy, what motivated the initial placing of this complaint, uh, what was wrong. Mm -hmm. now, now, because any, any reasonable viewer would ask themselves, but because the cars have been delivered, let's say we go with the state vision that only four cars have not, deli have not been delivered, then a fair viewer will ask, what is the problem here? Well, the red flags couldn't have been ignored in terms of processes. I mean, what they're speaking here are, are things we can't ignore. We can't ignore that they feel that uh, you, uh, your company was not open about you being, yeah. being the owner of the company. No, that, but, that, that, no but, but you see, you see that, that, that's, that's where I'm coming, that if you say the red flags, we then have to establish mm -hmm. who, that's what I'm saying, we have to establish who is this complainant, at what point did they complain. If you talk about red flags, when did this red flags come, come about? Who picked up this red flags? What was the role of these uh, ones who picked up the red flags? We have to understand all of yeah. that. Yeah. Because, because you see, uh, uh, by the way, I mean, uh, 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 our government in this country has not reached a level where things are done by robotics. These things were done by human beings. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so these are professionals, men and women of integrity. They will be able to clarify because, well, a larger part of the things that you are asking to be fair to, to, to Enviro Mobi, which I'm not representing here, really have got to do with GDAT. They don't have anything because, number one, uh, service providers don't pay themselves. Mm -hmm. They are paid by government. And service providers are paid based on the compact they will have with a government department. Yeah. That is an arrangement. So now you see, I, 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 I almost, you know, overreached in the sense that I went into a space that uh, effectively is not our space. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be dealing w to the best of my knowledge, questions that might have to do with EnviroMobi and where I knew. But what I'm aware of is that here was an innovation being implemented, working with GDAT, to try and deal with, uh, yeah, you know, Salam, with, uh, I, I with, 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 with I, the informal waste. I, I have to consider that you were a spokesperson for many years, and we're going to go around in circles. Because, no, no, but we're not. Uh, no, no, we, we're going to because um, the point is not the project itself and the value of the project. It's more complex than that. But we, we're going to have to leave it here. Um, you were a spokesperson for many years. You and I could speak until the show is over. No, no, but so uh, let, let me thank you for your okay. time. I do thank you. No, but, uh, but, yeah. let, but let me make a parting shot. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm not taking anything away from you. And I'm not taking the seriousness. I'm not watering down the seriousness of the questions yeah. that you are asking. I'm not responding on those questions uh, using the artifact of having been a spokesperson. I'm mm -hmm. sharing with you the facts as I know them. Yes, to, you your, know. to your understanding. Yes, yes. So, so, so bad. We will, we will further amplify these issues when they are best ventilated in court. Absolutely. I do thank you for your time. No, thanks. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Pula Mabe joining us in studio there, just uh, clarifying a few pointers there regarding the appearance, of course, in court and the accusations at hand.